Hello YouTube, welcome to a QAPF diagram tutorial. This will be the first in a series of videos describing uh, QAPF diagrams for different types of igneous rocks. So basically I'll just describe the diagrams, how they work, and then work through some examples on how to classify igneous rocks based on this diagram. So what is a QAPF diagram? A QAPF diagram is a method to classify rocks based on their mineral percentages. That is to say, it gives a naming convention to igneous rocks based on the percentage of minerals in that rock. And it's basically the standard to classify igneous rocks. An important thing to note here is that this particular diagram is for phaneritic rocks only. And phaneritic means the grains or the minerals you can see with the naked eye. And it implies that it's a plutonic or intrusive rock, like a granite or something that cooled within the earth at higher temperatures than at the surface, okay? And so this particular diagram here is for those rocks only. Um, there are other diagrams for aphanitic rocks or pyroclastic rocks, uh, but those are different diagrams. We're just going to focus on this right now for simplicity. So how do we use this diagram? Well, the first thing we have to do is to determine the percentage of each mineral in the rock that we are examining. Uh, this is sometimes called the mode. So after we determine the mode, or we determine the percentage of each mineral in the rock, we are going to plot those mineral, mineral percentages on this diagram, and from that we'll come up with a name for that rock, okay? So let me explain this diagram to you um, and how it works and what it's showing us. If you notice this diagram, it has four points. It's sort of a diamond shape. It's kind of like a double ternary diagram. Uh, and each of these points represents a mineral, okay? So at the top here, we have Q for quartz. Uh, over on the left here, we have A for alkali feldspar. Over on the right, we have a P for plagioclase feldspar. And down on the bottom here, we have an F, which represents feldspathoids or foids. So each point of the diamond represents a mineral. And the apex of this point represents 100% of that mineral. So for instance, let me make some room here. At this apex here, this represents 100% quartz, okay? 100% quartz up here. The apex down at the other end, right here, represents 100% feldspathoids. The A apex right here represents 100% alkali feldspar. And finally, the apex here at the P represents 100% plagioclase, okay? Now, if this is 100% quartz up here, 0% quartz will be at this line here, okay? And we can see that on the numbers on the side of this diagram. So here we have 5, we have 20, 60, 90, and then we get up to our apex, and that's 100. So this line here represents 0% quartz, okay? Likewise, for the feldspathoids, we have 100% here, we have 90% there, 60% there, we have 10% there, and this red line will double as the 0% uh, feldspathoid line, okay? So 0% feldspathoids on this line, and 0% quartz on this line as well. One thing to note here is that feldspathoids never occur in the same rock as quartz, okay? So you're never going to have a rock with quartz and feldspathoids together, okay? It just doesn't happen in nature. Okay, so let's look at the alkali feldspar and plagioclase line here. So if 100% alkali feldspar is right here at this apex, where is 0% going to be? It's going to be over here at the plagioclase feldspar apex. So that's 0% alkali feldspar. Conversely, 100% plagioclase feldspar is at this apex, so 0% will be over here at the opposite apex, or the alkali feldspar apex. So this is 0% plagioclase. Plagioclase increases in this direction, and alkali feldspar increases in the opposite direction, okay? And these lines on the diagram represent the percentage of either plagioclase or alkali feldspar Right, So if we have 100% here of plagioclase and 0% here, this line here represents 10% plagioclase. This line represents 35%. This line is 65%, 90%, and so on. This 10% line for plagioclase will represent 
90% for alkali feldspar. So we could actually change that to 90 for alkali. This line will represent 65, right? We're decreasing to the zero point here, which is the apex or plagioclase. And then this would be 35. And this would be 10. So it's basically just the opposite of the plagioclase line, okay? Does that make sense? So let me show you how a rock would actually plot on this diagram based on the mineral percentages. Um, if I had 35% quartz in a rock, that would plot, let's see, 0% quartz is there, right? Because 100% is there. 0%, 5%, 25%, 35% 35 would be somewhere in there, right? Let's just call that 35%. And I would know that my rock would, my rock name would plot somewhere along this line, depending on how much alkali feldspar or plagioclase feldspar is in my rock, okay? So let's say the rock also had about 50% plagioclase in it, okay? So 50% plagioclase would plot where? If 100 is right here, 100 is right there, 0% is right there, 50% would plot right in the middle right there, right? So I'll draw a line up from that 50% mark, and I know exactly where my rock is going to land. It's in right in the middle there in the Monzo granite field, okay? And a more general term for that would be a granite, okay? Just a basic granite. So there's a couple stipulations we need to outline before we know that we can actually use this particular diagram. Um, remember, this is the diagram for a phaneritic rock or an, a plutonic rock. So first of all, the rock must have a phaneritic texture, which again means the minerals can be identified with the naked eye. It also must contain at least 10% quartz, alkali, feldspar, plagioclase, or feldspathoids, okay? So here are the two other diagrams that are commonly used to classify igneous rocks. Uh, on the left is a diagram for pyroclastic rocks, and instead of mineralogy, we're going to classify pyroclastic rocks based on class size. So no mineralogy, just class size. But it works the same way as the other diagram. On the right, uh, we have a QEPF diagram for extrusive or volcanic rocks. So this works exactly the same way as the other diagram that we've been looking at. In this case, you would just use it for extrusive or volcanic rocks. So that'll do it for this video. Um, I will make a second video where I actually work through an example, and I'll take an actual rock and use the QAPF diagram to classify that rock. I'll put the link to that video in the comments section. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And go ahead and like the video if you find it helpful. Uh, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.